Welcome to evening prayer here at Beautiful Savior. As we continue reading through the book of Romans, going through tonight, we are in Romans chapter 6. As we read, reflect, and pray through God's word that we hear to the letter of Romans. As we get started this evening, we invite you to take a moment to prepare yourself for a time of prayer. knowing as God's people that he is with us when we call upon him, and that as we close our day, he hears us with all of our needs. We join together in God's name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praise to your name, O Most High. To proclaim your love in the morning. Your truth at the close of the day. Let us continue with the song for the evening. Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. 
For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are no longer under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one who obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I am using an example from everyday life because you, because your human limitations, just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now, offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God. The benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We join together confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we close our day, we turn to words that the church has echoed throughout the years, remembering that glory that has been revealed to us when the song of Simeon. We join together. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Oh, precious. 
As we join together in prayer, looking through those words we heard in Romans chapter 6, and praying that they would not just be words we hear, but words that impact our entire life, our life of faith, and our trust in what God has done for us. We join together knowing that he hears us and that these words have been given to you so that you would have life and faith in him. Let us join together in prayer. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we hear in those words that Paul wrote down to the church in Rome, What shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin, that grace may abound? We give thanks to you, Lord, for sending your Son to be the Anointed One, the one who was our substitute for our sins. We pray, Lord, that you would give us eyes to see this gift, and instead of saying that because we are forgiven, that we then can continue on in our sin, continue on in our rebellion, that we would see that he is the one that died as our representative. He is the one that died on our behalf, and his death has given us a new life, a new resurrection, and a new life in him. We pray, Lord, that we would put to death our old life, that life that was leading to eternal death, and instead live a life of eternal life in him, a life that serves you in obedience, in the joy of life that you have put before us. We pray, Lord, that it would be Jesus that lives in us instead of our old sinful desires. Help us to love you and to love others as you have loved us so that we would see your grace abound in the way that we conduct ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Paul reminds us, O oh Lord, that God forbid that we would continue on sinning, that your grace would be seen that way, but instead that we are to put to death our sin and not live that way anymore. We ask, Lord, that we would continue to give thanks to you in how we live out our lives now. We thank you, Lord, that we have that wonderful news that Jesus didn't just die for the sins that we have committed, but even the sins that we fail, the sins that we have done, and the sins that we haven't done yet. We pray, Lord, that this wouldn't become a crutch to our lives, but instead we pray that we would put to death the old sinful Adam, our old sinful nature, that our old sins wouldn't have power over us. Instead, we would put our trust in you, that we would continue to see that this is not the way you want us to live, that you want us to live a life of righteousness and holiness, just as Jesus has done for us. In his name, amen. We are reminded in Paul's letter that as we were baptized into Jesus, we were baptized into his death. Heavenly Father, we thank you 
that in Jesus dying on the cross, he forgave our sins and gave us a new identity, an identity that is bound with his death and with his resurrection, one that we now see that death holds no power over us, that instead we have seen our identity in you, one in which we have already been judged righteous because of that death and resurrection, because death has already shown that it has no power over us in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that we would continue to see that wonderful news, that we would continue to see what he has done for us and that we have already died to sin and are now alive in you. Help us, Lord, to live out that life, to live out that calling, to live out, O oh Lord, that calling to be your children in that newness of life that you call us to walk in, that we would continue to conduct ourselves to demonstrate that power of the baptismal waters that call us to put to death our old life and instead trust in you and how we continue to live. Help us, Lord, to see that declaration of how you have claimed us, renewed us, and made us your own, to be now our true identity and our true life. Help us, Lord, not to look to you and to say that you are the one that only did something once, but you did it for all. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We are reminded also, Lord, that if we have been planted together, that we have been planted in that death and resurrection of Jesus. In the likeness of his death, we too find a likeness in his resurrection. Unite us, Lord, with Christ. Unite us in his death and resurrection. Unite us in the life that we are called to live, a life that gives us eternal joy, a life that directs us, not giving us a life that leads only to a grave, but a life that guides us each day, a life that directs our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and all that we have in that love of Christ. Draw us to see that we now have an eternal life in you. We pray, Lord, that your goodness will be shown in how we live, because we have been planted in streams of living water. We have been planted in a place that now we know will produce good fruit. Help us, Lord, to trust in that newness of life, to trust in that resurrection, and to trust in that likeness like Jesus. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Knowing as we hear in Romans, knowing this wonderful truth that the old man, the old Adam is crucified with Jesus, that the body of sin was destroyed, we no longer are called to serve sin. And so, Heavenly Father, we pray to you. We pray that you would remind us that we are called not to serve sin, not to serve our needs, not to serve the kingdom of this world, but instead to serve in your kingdom of life. Remind us, Lord, that we are not our own. We are yours, and this is a wonderful thing to belong to you. Remind us, Lord, that the old self sought to seek out its own meaning, but instead we now find life and meaning in you because we have been freed from sin and been made to be your children. We aren't just servants of you, Lord, but instead we are heirs in Christ Jesus. Remind us of that forgiveness. Remind us of that life. Remind us of that calling. Remind us, Lord, that you now have a place for us, a truth for us, and a walk and life for us, that we have been freed. And if you say we are freed, remind us that then we truly are free indeed. This is what we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And knowing that Christ has been raised from the dead, death no more has power over us. We pray, Lord, that we would not then look back to death in fear. We pray that for those that are going through that shadow of death right now, you would give healing and comfort knowing that death isn't the end. That right now they are preparing to enter into that rest and that sleep and that inheritance. We pray, Lord, for those that are mourning the death of a loved one who is now alive in Christ as they go through a time of grieving. A reminder of that identity and that love that has been shown to their loved ones. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to help us speak this news to those who are dying. That there is good news, there is hope, and there is salvation. For as we hear, for in that death he died for sin once. And now we are called to live unto God. Help us to live unto you and how we live out that newness of life. Whether that is in life or in death whether that is in richness or in poor, in all that we do, help us to live a life to you, to be alive in Jesus Christ, the most wonderful truth that you have given to us. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Help us, Lord, to be reminded that we are instruments of the body of Christ, that this is not based off of our righteousness, because what we contributed was the sin and rebellion that caused you to send your son for us, but that we who once were dead now are alive in the righteousness of God. Remind us that we are of one body. Remind us, Lord, that as the body of Christ, we are part of that groaning, waiting for that new creation that has just started with that resurrection. We pray, Lord, for that newness of life to continue to grow. We pray for that newness of life as we await that day when Jesus comes again. And we wait for the resurrection that we prayed for and confessed as we turn to you, knowing that this is what was promised to us. We continue groaning with your church as it waits for that glorious day, saying, come, Lord Jesus, come quickly, that we would continue to praise you for all eternity. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Remind us, Lord. Remind us that we cannot serve two masters. Remind us, Lord, that whoever is, that we are called to put to death the sin that is within us and to live unto righteousness. We pray, Lord, for those that are struggling with this at this time. We pray, Lord, for those that are going through difficult times, whether that be through addiction, whether that be through struggling with letting go of the things of this world. We pray, Lord, for those that are caught up and not even able to see the things that are holding them back. We pray that you would give us insight, wisdom, and eyes to see what you have done, that we would see what you have done as the greatest thing, and that even in times where there is a struggle with addiction, there is a struggle with letting go, there is a struggle with what holds us back, Christ is the one who gives us full righteousness, and that he triumphs even over those things. This we pray in Jesus' name. As we prepare for our time of rest at the close of our day, Lord, we turn to you knowing that you have made us clean, even in times of uncertainty. You have made us righteous, even when we do not feel righteous. You have given us holiness, even in those times where we fear about our unholiness. As we know that this now is true, Lord, we are reminded that the wages of sin is death, but that death no longer has a wage over us. Death no longer is what we see being held as what we are going to be paid because Jesus paid that all for us. He is the one that has paid the price that we never could pay. And so as those coming to you with nothing to offer, we are reminded that he has paid a wonderful and deep price for us. Help us never to become shallow, never to become numb, never to look at that gift as anything but a gracious, wonderful gift that we could never earn back. And hear us, Lord, as we join together at the close of our day, as we join together at this time praying Luther's evening prayer. I thank, thank you, my, my heavenly Father, Father through Jesus Christ, Christ your dear Son, son that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Rest in that peace and assurance of God. Rest in the knowledge that Jesus has paid it all. Rest knowing what he has done for you. And so as we close our time in prayer, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rest in God's peace this evening.